So this might seem like kind of an odd thing to have to do a tutorial on, but when I was in my early 20s, I had never really learned how to skate a bowl. Sure, I could skate a half pipe and do some basic lip tricks, but when it came to actually carving around in a bowl, I didn't know how to do this. And because I was already a skateboarder for like 11 years before that, I was too intimidated to jump in there and learn how to do it. So I just avoided bowls altogether. And it wasn't until my early 20s where I actually really developed the bug for transition and learned how to do it. And there's some basic principles that will really help you out in figuring out like how to carve a bowl. So part of the way you get your speed in a bowl is by treating it like a half pipe on its side. Now I'm gonna show you guys what I mean by that. So when you look at a ramp, it's got the obvious thing where it curves, goes flat and curves up. So that's your traditional half pipe. Now let's look at the bowl real quick. So we've got the same shape. It curves, goes flat, and then curves up. So now I'm gonna show you how you can keep speed in a bowl by using the same principle of pumping. I'm gonna continuously circle around this bowl and you'll get the idea of what I mean. So, as you can see, I can continuously build speed by using the same principles as pumping on a half pipe. If you don't know how to pump on a half pipe, you better learn how to do that first or this isn't going to make any sense. So you want to pick a bowl that's going to work for you in the beginning. So not all bowls are created equal. And I would say this one I've picked right here, if you broke bowls into three categories, like beginner, intermediate and advanced, I would say this one is like right in between beginner and intermediate because it doesn't have any low transitions but what it does have is you just find the lines like you don't even have to try every pocket shoots you into the next pocket so check out this line here So as you can see, I'm able to gain speed by pumping through all the corners by treating them like a half pipe on its side. And each one sort of shoots me into the next one. The other thing I try to do is I try to get up as close to the coping as I can. You also need to have pretty loose trucks. When you're skating a bowl, you need to be keeping all four wheels on until you're going to do a coping trick. If you're having to do a lot of tic tacking and lifting up, then you're not carving the bowl properly. You need to loosen your trucks and you need to get a truck that turns well also. So day two, different bowl. As is often the case when I go out to film a tutorial in one day, I forget something and I have to go and do something else. And one crucial thing I left out on that day is hips. The next thing is using the hips to gain speed when you can't stay up in the corners all the time because gravity brings you down and you can't reasonably stay up right next to the coping the whole time. So the next thing is hips. So what do I define as hips? So see that big bulbous thing down there, the volcano, and then see the end of that quarter pipe over there, that would be one. And then let's get down here and we can see another corner out here. So anywhere where it corners, anywhere where you can go ride over a hip. So now I'm going to clear the bowl of any rocks that might be in there, which I should have done at the start, but I'm going to look around and then we're going to do one last speed line in this bowl to close out the video. There's eight little things that could have sent me flying quite easily. Bike chain, bolt, big rock, a few little rocks, and a couple random pieces of metal. So I'm glad I looked.
So that is my favorite line in this bowl, the one I do over and over. And I occasionally exchange a carve for a grind here or there, but I'm not in the mood to skate six foot transition today. So let's review the general concepts of skating a bowl, how to carve around and keep speed in a bowl. So it's carving around the corners, like a half pipe on its side. It's using the hips as little pump bumps everywhere you can. And it's trying to, as often as you can, keep all four wheels on the concrete and doing large, broad turns to help maintain your speed. Because a kick turn, unless it's really high up on a really steep wall, usually takes away more speed than you can get out of it in terms of actually navigating through a bowl. I mean, obviously you can gain speed doing just kick turns or people wouldn't be able to skate half pipes the way they can. But in terms of actually like going around, figure eighting in bowls and stuff, you wanna try and keep all four wheels on the ground whenever possible. I know it's probably easier said than done. I take for granted the fact that I've been skateboarding for 25 years and that actually like getting up high on walls can actually be really intimidating if you're new. So stick to your limits, trust your gut, do what feels safe. And so for you street guys that have never ventured into a bowl, you might be pleasantly surprised at how much you enjoy it. I mean, I was surprised at how easy the learning curve was at first to really just kind of get my bearings carving around in a bowl. And the first thing I had to do was just get my ego out of the way and allow people to see me skating something not as proficiently as I skate flat ground and ledges. Or if you're much too self-conscious for that, just go early in the morning. I mean, the only other people that are gonna be there are old dudes anyway, so don't worry about it. Anyways, again, I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching and you'll see me in the next video.